uh, the round three of uh, the Keyforge event. Um, we have Jaleesa facing up Christian. I'm Travis from VTTV, and I have uh, a friend who's offered to help us today. And I'm Lucas. Hello. Thank you for having um, me. Let me bring up the list uh, so you can talk about what they have, and I'm going to just go let them know that the clock is starting. So the first thing that jumps out about Christine's deck is obviously the Time Traveler. Gives her good draw power, also good Amber gain, and also allows her to cycle her discard pile back into her deck, which will be incredibly helpful if you look at key cards like Virtuous Works, which is just a huge Amber boon right off the play. Get that back would be excellent. That's a six Amber swing already. You also have that coupled with the Reverse Time, which is swapping your discard pile with your deck. So with that, if she loops it at the right time, she'll have a really fabulous way to generate Amber with very little ability to sort of respond because she'll be drawing into her good cards over and over and over again. On the other side though, uh, Jaleesa's deck is pretty interesting because you see the key card there at Martian Generosity, the card that's been the, the downfall of many a player, the one where yes. you lose all your Amber, draw into basically your entire deck if you play it right, averaging about 6 to 14 card draws, and when you have all your options in your hand, especially if you look at her board where she has Soul Snatcher, Orb of Invidious, all these cards you want to get set up, or if you want to get that Briggs combo, that interdimensional graph coupled with the Binate Rupture, if you have those cards in hand, you're good to go. So with the Martian Generosity, that's a huge way to get those key cards together so you can couple them right when you need to. It'll be definitely interesting. Lots of board control on the side of Jaleesa, a lot of draw power and out-of-house play with the double uh, phase shifts from Christine. It's going to be a really interesting matchup. So Eureka was a card played. I recognize that as an alpha card. If you could just pull Eureka up for a moment. Sure. So Eureka gained two, archived two random cards from your hand. Not a bad way to start the game. Gives you an amber. Automatically pretty much a three amber swing right off the bat. Batron there. The ability skirmish and steal. Remote access. No artifacts on the field to actually use from Jaleesa. And there it is. The Virtuous Works. Swinging back. A three amber start for Jaleesa and a four amber start. Ooh, there we have it. So this is exactly what I was mentioning. So she's played a reverse works. She has played a remote access. And now those are going to be her draw pile, which allows her to immediately draw those again on her next turn. So next turn, as you can probably expect, Logo's turn, Skirmish, yep. uh, fighting with the Bat Drone into something to steal. Virtuous works with the phase shift, and you're good to go. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> it's not too bad, I would say. You know, getting eight Amber uh, in two turns is a pretty quick deck to keep up with. Here we have it. Let's see the response over here. Okay. This will be interesting. So the Orb of Invidious is a perpetual effect that anytime any creature reaps, it is stunned. So it, it slows down that whole idea of just sweep uh, reaping and gaining a ton of Amber. The Lash of Broken Dreams, make the key cost plus three when she activates it. Oof. And there we have it. Caller of Subordination stealing the Bat Drone away from her. Now, she also played down a Soul Snatcher, which means that any time a creature is destroyed, its owner is going to get a Amber from it. Wow. Okay. And I think she's just burning that Not Finish With You, which returns any number of creatures from your discard pile back into your deck because she doesn't have any creatures, if I'm not mistaken. That Eater of the Dead, just out on the field, hasn't activated its Purge effects for plus one power counters. And man, they're playing fast and quick. Today. They are playing super fast. I'm trying to keep up with all the action going on here, but let's see if they call another uh, Logos turn where we see if uh, Christine is going to do that Virtual Works phase shift into something combo, or if she's going to change her house this time around. I see a Poltergeist in hand, which would be really handy. If she plays it at the right time, I'll let her activate her opponent's artifact. But she goes with Gongoozle, a good play. Getting rid of that Bat Drone, three damage to a creature. Since it kills it, she doesn't get the discard effect, but also an Amber gain and some board control. There we go. So Christine is playing Poltergeist, not on the Lash. Interesting, getting the Orb of Invidious away. I guess she is gonna depend on some reaping, so she wants to make yes. sure that board control is off. And I. And the Shrek coming down, a classic card, capture three, Perfect. nothing too fancy. And now she is on check. Jaleesa is at one amber, and we'll see what the response is. Lash of Broken Dreams looks pretty tempting, but depending on her hand, calling disc might not be the best option here. Looks like she's got a couple cards, so it wouldn't be a wasted turn. And it looks like there's a Banish in hand, which could be really handy, getting rid of that Shrek for the turn, Lashing to make sure she can't forge. She'll have to deal with it again, but it gives her a bit of time to think about it. 
And there we go, the Banish comes out. So that's going to send Shred into Christine's own archive, so it doesn't get rid of her. She can pull it out on her next disc turn if she wants. Okay, so when you reap with Eater of the Dead, you can purge a creature from a discard pile. So she is probably going to target that bat drone, the one that's yep. hanging around. That is going to be out of the game. So despite all the looping that Christine might have in her deck, that bat drone is going to be gone. And tap the lash, make the keys cost nine. So no forging. And that would be, that would also, she should have a power counter on Eater yes, of the Dead, right? she should have a power counter on Eater of the Dead because, yeah, she definitely did the purge effect. So we're we're not necessarily judges here, so we're not going to be going and correcting game state. Uh, we may flag a judge on some things uh, if it is a a bigger misplay or a willful misplay. Right, right. There it is. That combo coming out twice, so so strong. She has gone up to ten ammo. She has tapped the lash, so now she doesn't have to worry about that on the next turn. Her keys are going to cost six unless something new comes down. And, you know, like, you can't really complain, eh? No, it's going pretty well for her. One card generates you six amber, and then you loop oh. it. Ah, man, so good, so good. And I, wish really, I, really I don't know what life these, these players are on. Uh, they enough. were ne relatively near the top of the standings. I think they were table four, maybe? So okay. they, it's a good chance they're 2-0 and still. Okay. Well, with these decks, they definitely seem like contenders, for sure. Like Absolutely. They seem like strong decks. And now the Mars Suite's coming down. Okay, just two. So Agent Human, uh, and then the Sky Booster Squadron. There you go. Agent Human, an interesting card, or who man, I should say. Interesting card, stun one of your own creatures, stun one of the other. I'm noticing a theme in Jaleesa's deck here, a lot of stun, a lot of yes. board control in that respect. But we got the first key forged over on Christine's side. She still has four amber, over half a key remaining. But it looks like Jaleesa's is going to follow suit soon enough. Uh, maybe not this turn. Maybe not this turn. Because Charette's coming back. Yeah, you know what's coming back. Nice. Okay, capturing three. Okay. Red Hot Armor, an interesting card. Not going to do anything, really. There's no creatures with armor on the board. Okay, Dance of Doom. She wanted to choose the number four, I yes. would imagine. But with Shred on the field, that seems like not the ideal play. The two is not terrible because no. you're getting rid of the Dust Imp. You're getting exactly. yourself some Amber, and you setting yourself up to Forge next turn, and you are still hitting an enemy I creature. Was say, like, not a bad play in the slightest. Even with a misplay, still coming out in relatively, not even relatively good shape, in great shape. In to fact. be fair, I, I mean, that might even have been the better play yeah. and kind of really putting that key pressure on by having two right. uh, before your opponents even uh, Forge their first. And without, yeah, because without killing the Dust Imp, she wouldn't have gotten there. So that's, exactly. that's a really great, a really great point. Oh, she has the Ember Imp in hand, too. That could, in hand too. That could be really troublesome. But let's see what Jaleesa responds with, because now that Shred is coming back to haunt her. I feel a little bad. Uh, Jaleesa's been on the streams before. Uh, she mentioned that she's a little bit cursed uh, <laughs> and doesn't always play her best game. Oh, uh, the stream curse. I think she's been playing uh, just fine, but Christine's had some very strong cards. And I think, honestly, this was an excellent draw for Christine. She had that combo I was talking about from the beginning. The phase shift, the virtuous works, the reverse time, loops yeah. it twice. What more could you really ask for? So Now, with that, if that uh, power counter was on, yep. it, she should have enough of a creature up, but... A good play. Onyx Knight killing all odd power creatures, getting rid of that pit demon, that perpetual steel threat. And there she goes. If you remember to tap the lash, just double checking that she got that so the T cannot The Misery ex exploit was what she played? Yeah, and that was just discarding because no damaged creatures, so no amber gain yeah. there. An interesting card. Hard to get off, though, because, again, if you kill a creature or leave a lot of damage on the board, sometimes not the best strategy. Sometimes it's hard to get that one uh, to its maximal benefit. Okay, we got a Logos turn coming up from Christine. She's going to archive a card and discard a card. I'm just going to pull these, make the cards a little easier to see as they're played. There we go. So she gets rid of the Ember Imp, an interesting call, but it doesn't look like she has any discs in her hand. So probably a good play. 
not even probably, a good play, yes. because it allows her to fill her hand up with something that will be a lot more useful. And having just an Ember Imp on the field when she has creatures on the other side, probably not going to help you too much. Now, in terms of Logos, though, I did see her draw into that Help from Future Self, a good way to search for that Time Traveler, which yes. is going to give her just a two Amber turn, two card draw. Again, you can't really complain too much with that. So, Jaleesa hanging on. She has now her first key forged by the looks of it. Yeah. Oh, yes, right. Uh, so we are 1-1. One, one. We definitely have an amber advantage on Christine's side. Oh. Okay, so she doesn't have the binate rupture as well, but she will get all of the amber that Christine does not spend. So it's just two, but still. It's going to give a bit of a swing. And Archimedes down. And now a power card after the new ruling, one that caused a right. bit of a stir in the community. So we'll see how that comes into effect. But right now, just next to the Sky Booster Squadron, so not doing too much work. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Second key down for Christine, though. Sure. So it's two to one with. Three and do you want to just quickly explain that ruling for those who might not yeah. uh, have heard it? So Archimedes has the effect where it says each of its neighbors gains destroyed artifact this card. People thought that when you played something like a board wipe, only the neighbors of Archimedes, when the board wipe is played, would get archived. But now the ruling is, is that destroyed has this weird timing effect where it hasn't quite gone to the discard. So you resolve destroyed effects before you actually discard anything. So what happens is the battle line collapses and suddenly everything gets a little closer to mm -hmm. uh, your Archimedes and everything ends up getting archived except Archimedes. So an excellent counter to board wipes, um, essentially allowing you to archive your entire battle line if it's big enough. Right. So... Not too bad there, but again, just sitting next to that Sky Booster Squadron. Here we have it, Time Traveler. Time Traveler coming down. She has actually Time Traveler and Help from Future Self in her hand, which is, <laughs> which is interesting. So she burns the Help from Future Self just for the Amber. Doesn't need to search for a Time Traveler, because that is already there. Reads with the Archivist, archives a card. A straight, oh. And there we have it. Was her was her amber supposed to go to Jalisa from? No, she actually did. So after that, she only had two. Two went oh, to right, Jalisa, right, which right. puts her at three. So that that all did happen. All right, I I'm, I keep looking for the yellow amber on <laughs> Jalisa's side. Fair enough. So I couldn't find where her amber was. No, so they did that one. If she had that binate raptor combo when uh, Christine was at ten, though, putting oh, her at twenty been, amber, brutal. stealing fourteen, that would have put her right back into this. But she is a little behind at this point in time. Not in a position where she is out of it yet. There's some good control on her side. Two Carpet Floxums. Those are the do four damage to each creature if you control no friendly creatures. But, of course, she does have those three creatures on the board, just getting the Amber to go up to five. Okay. Worm in the Harvester. Reap with Sky Booster. Goes back to the hand. Let's see. Okay. Mars first. So Mars first lets her uh, ready a Mars creature. Probably going to be that Harvester, just to get the Amber. Harvester is reap, get two Amber. And there we have it. Excellent. So look at that. Julissa coming back now at nine Amber. So when she forges her key, she's just right on Christine's tail. I would have been tempted to... Uh, kill the time traveler, no, and take it out of that rotation. Yeah. And I'll prevent the, I mean, they're close enough now that it might just be a race for Amber. Fair. So taking away that play may be too slow. Right. And it's a fair point, because when you loop that time traveler, it is just an absolute pest. Especially yeah. Especially when you're going through your deck like that. And, I mean, on the board it's valuable, in your deck it's valuable, in your de it's always valuable wherever <laughs> yeah, it is. Absolutely. In your opponent's archives, not so much. Right. All right, we've got a whole mess of Sanctum creatures so coming out here. So what we seem to have is a staunch knight, powerful creatures riding the flanks there. They gain plus two power when they're on the flank, and she has flanked her entire battle line with those. We have a champion, Anathiel, who is a just a beefy taunt creature, pretty straightforward there. A Sequus right next to it which is very similar to the Raiding Knight next to the Sequus, but Sequus is Reap Capture 1, the Raiding Knight is Play and Capture 1. So some good control there. But Jaleesa coming back with two keys, and Christine actually still just sitting at the four Amber she had before. Played a great Sanctum board, didn't generate much Amber that turn, and now Jaleesa is just two Amber behind. Yes, but there's a lot of tools on Christine's board to, well not 
a lot of tools, but there's some tools to keep stealing some, am keep for capturing sure. some amber. It's not going to be very easy for Jalisa to do anything about it, uh, short of a board wipe. The thing that I do see, though, which I think is interesting, is that collector worm can be a real pain because with that five armor, it can just poke at those captured creatures, stuff them into the archive. It might be a little slow, but it's a good way to. Well, the capture creature. Well, the one you get to back off. Sequus does have the taunt beside it, so it's going to be a while true. before that is a really you can point. deal with Sequus. Yeah, and even if you, you know, if you fight into the champion and Athiel, it's still that's a whole turn, right? Yeah. Whole turn to get that amber back. So let's see. Let's see what the responses are in hand. I see a Binding Irons, an interesting card. Again, limiting draw power at this point might not be the route that they want to take. Like you said, it seems to be a mad race for amber. But. So what we were talking about, she is going to fight right into the Anaphil. Just figuring out the yep. damage, it seems. And there it is. Anaphil is done. Xanthix Harvester, Harvester grabbing two Amber, putting her up to four. A tie game. Ooh. There we go. Do you reap there or do you kill Sequus? <sighs> That's what I'm wanting. Sequus does have two oh, yeah, the armor, armor, though. Does have the armor. Oh, Okay. Uh, Mars needs Amber, not going to do too much. So for each damage creature, your, uh, sorry, each damage creature your opponent has, they have to capture their own Amber. So it's a pseudo steal. Yeah. But another one comes down, putting her up to seven. So the pressure is on for Christine to do something now. Wow, Jalisa coming back after the mad Amber ramp from Christine early. She is sorry. now. Why? Uh why was there no enemy? Oh, it's not damage, it's amber. It's right, I was The red is killing too. me. I know, the red was killing me too. Okay. So the red is <laughs> Jaleesa's unique amber tokens. Sure. I was thinking the exact same thing. Oh, here we go though. A double take hostages. Now, take hostages is, ooh, if I'm not mistaken, it's every time they fight, they capture an additional amber. Yes. Okay, so this will be, be good. Radiant Truth, great card coming out. So each enemy creature not on a flank is going to be stunned. Oof. And I think she has just enough creatures to fight with and just enough creatures to kill to capture. Blinding Light, not going to do too much since most things are stunned, but... And which house does she pick? She picks this to stun that Onyx Knight. Just getting rid of some uh, options for her next turn. Poof. Now this is where things get serious. Shield of Justice, no damage is going to be taken from fighting. Coupled yes. with the double take hostages means that they're taking no damage. They're capturing two Amber. Oh, goodness gracious. That's a, that is a oh, combo of cards. Yes, goodbye board. Hello, all your Amber. <laughs> now that is a swing. And look at that. Every card she played has an Amber gain. So she gains five Amber just from playing her turn. Doesn't have to worry about reaping because she's just going to fight away. Yeah. All right. Capturing two Amber there. Two damage, two Amber. Not a bad trade. Now, Jaleesa. Okay, Jaleesa's going to put those. we got to remember, those are not wounds. Those are not damage. Those are Amber. So she's already off a key. The other Staunch Knight going in. Okay. Onyx Knight is going to get... Taken away. Two damage again. Two amber captured. I think she might have I think she just, I think she's just putting the power out now on those flank creatures. Well, I think that's the damage they took. Because I think she forgot she played Shield of Justice. That's, which means they take no damage. Yeah. So, again, we'll see if that comes into play. Yeah. And also, they did forget the Archimedes trigger, where Onyx Knight should be archived as well. So... A few missed triggers. I don't think it's ultimately going to impact the outcome of the game. I don't think so, because it looks like Christine, if I'm not, if my math is correct, she's sitting at 11 amber. Jaleesa's now sitting at 1 with a bunch of amber captured. I don't see any card here that can Unless she's prevent holding on. That. Does she have an unlock gateway? She does have one unlock gateway, but that is an Omega card, which means that's the only thing she can do. And I mean, she has nothing to do, deal with the honor that Christine has. Yeah. Or the honor, the amber. <laughs> Oh, I see a Shuler in hand. That would get her down to 10, but unless she can steal three Amber, I think this might be, that might be the end. That's the game. So Jaleesa calls it, recognizes you can't quite deal with that mass amount of Amber. Oh, I think Christine won that game. Oops, did I put the wrong, I did put the wrong check mark. 
My bad. No worries. So Christine taking that with her deck. A really, really strong showing. Definitely. So much Amber gain. So much board state. Just a really tough deck to deal with. But Jaleesa definitely showing the strength of her deck. Coming back when it seemed like she was two keys up and then made it to the third key. Pushing for check on the win. And then Christine coming out with that five card Sanctum combo from hand. Right. Just absolutely showing that uh, Sanctum. Maybe one of the less played houses, but definitely a tour de force for sure. No, that, was, that shows the power of the house.